fact of the matter is, if he loses either of those two states, game over. It's out. Hillary Clinton becomes president. We also see Hillary Clinton in North Carolina as well. And who she's with? She's with Pharrell Williams this evening. You know why? Because she needs to get out the African-American vote. We've seen a depressed African-American uh, vote uh, in that state and elsewhere as well as Florida. And get this. Hillary Clinton's going to go to Detroit on Friday. Detroit, Michigan. Now, that should be a reliably blue state. But the fact of the matter is she's going to go there and Bill Clinton's going to go to Colorado. So it just goes to show you that the polls are starting to match up where we think the candidates are, are concerned about internally. So are we going to get the shoulder shake from Clinton when she's with Pharrell uh, Williams? I hope so. He inspires that. Song, that. that song Happy, Happy comes on. So uh, the map. How do you see the map right now in light of the latest numbers? Are any colors changing in your mind? Well, a couple things, and I think David Chalian did a really good job uh, this past hour, uh, you know, showing uh, how you get there. Look, right now there's a little bit of momentum behind, uh, behind Donald Trump. It's clearly there, at least the, the perception is, and that's all you need. But when you look at the map right now, there is obviously concern uh, amongst uh, the Clinton campaign that Colorado could be shifting. And we saw a new poll late last night out of Colorado that showed the, the race tightening. Bill Clinton's going to be out there. The fact that Hillary Clinton is going to Michigan right now is still trying to protect her flank, right? She's going there and she's going to do several get out to vote rallies uh, on Friday. Stevie Wonder is going to be in Pennsylvania doing a get out the vote rally. So when we're talking about flipping states right now, the fact of the matter is we don't necessarily know, but we know that Trump is trying to go on the offense in some of these blue states. But really the bottom, bottom line is, is that Donald Trump still needs to do a clean sweep. Donald Trump still needs to win some of these big states, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, and then several others. It's not going to be an easy task. Okay, so we can just look at where the top surrogates for each campaign will be today. If we start with Trump, right. you can see they are spanned out across the country, hitting all sorts of those important states. And then Hillary Clinton's top surrogates, here's what their day ahead looks like. Yeah, I mean, kind of anything, anything unexpected there, Mark? Well, I'll tell you what, the one person, let, let's focus on the one person today. Everyone should tune in, Melania Trump. Let's see how she does during that speech in Philadelphia. Can she soften up her husband? And really, what does she have to say? We haven't heard a whole lot from her. So out of everyone, let's keep an eye on Melania. Okay, great. Thanks so much for the bottom line, Mark. And good morning. I'm Carol Costello. Thank you so much for joining me. It is a fierce showdown. The race is tightening up. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton scrambling to sell themselves, and they only have five days left to do it. That's right. You can count it on one hand. Both candidates trying to lock in critical votes in places like Battleground, North Carolina today, and the Clinton campaign rolling out major surrogates again, making stops in crucial states like Florida and Ohio. Donald Trump looking to rev up support with a boost from his own kids and a rare stump speech from his wife, Melania. We are covering all the angles with our team of political reporters, but let's begin with CNN's Jason Carroll. He's in Jacksonville this morning. Hi, Jason. Good morning to you, Carol. Can you believe it? Just five days to go. And with things being so close in the polls and so close to Election Day, the campaign is really feeling somewhat encouraged, encouraged by the polls, which show a tightening race. So what they really want going forward is for Donald Trump, their candidate, to stay on message, not to step on his message. He's been challenged with doing that throughout the campaign. And Donald Trump, in a way, poked fun at himself just yesterday, uh, reminding himself publicly that he has to do just that. We've got to be nice and cool, nice and cool. Right, stay on point, Donald, stay on point. No sidetracks, Donald, nice and easy, nice. Because I've been watching Hillary the last few days. She's totally on a hinge. We don't want any of that. So that's one of their goals, Carol. Stay on point, stay on message, and also still try to make inroads of Philadelphia. Donald Trump tweeting about that. He says, my wife Melania will be speaking in Pennsylvania this afternoon. So exciting. Big crowds. I will be watching from North Carolina. The campaign also not giving up on states like Wisconsin, not giving up on Michigan as well. Mike Pence will be there with Ted Cruz, who will be out campaigning for the top of the ticket for the first time there in Michigan, also in Iowa. Trump, for his part, when he's done here in Jacksonville, he's going to be heading to North Carolina, making two stops there. Carol? All right, Jason Carroll reporting live from Jacksonville, Florida. Thanks so much. Well, Trump tries to stay on message. Hillary Clinton is warning her supporters what a Trump presidency would look like. 
He has shown us who he is. Now we have to decide who we are. And right now, across the country, people are doing just that. They are rejecting his dark and divisive vision. We know that America is big-hearted, not small-minded. We want to lift people up, not tear each other down. Let's bring in CNN senior Washington correspondent Joe Johns. Hi, Joe. Hi, Carol. Hillary Clinton's closing argument to get out the vote in the <clears throat> excuse me, battleground states is sounding much more somber than her campaign would have preferred, though they say they are hoping to get back to talking more about the candidate's vision for the country before it's all over. She's expected to have two stops in North Carolina today, wrapping up tonight with an event featuring Pharrell Williams and her opponent in the primaries, Bernie Sanders. Her top surrogates fanning out around the country, including the surrogate in chief, President Obama, who was just in North Carolina on Wednesday and in Miami today. Here's a sampling of what the surrogates are saying on the trail. All of you are uniquely qualified to make sure this guy who's uniquely unqualified does not become president. You've just got to vote. You've just got to vote. Trump consumes so much oxygen um, with what he is um, saying um, and in how he is demeaning um, huge swaths of our country. Our future is bright, but we can't get there if we choose anger over answers and if we choose fantasy over facts. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy doesn't get it. On his sixth bankruptcy, he stiffed more workers than you can count. And they said on national television debate, maybe I didn't like the quality of the work. Well, Trump, maybe I don't like the quality of what you say. Maybe I don't like the quality of who you are. Today, Hillary Clinton's running mate, Tim Kaine, is in Arizona. Bill Clinton is in Las Vegas. Chelsea Clinton is in Wisconsin, so they're all working it, Carol. They certainly are. Joe Johns reporting live for us this morning. Thank you. Which is five days to go. Trump clearly feels the White House is within reach and in a bid to stay on that path to 270. And also on message, Trump issued this strict warning to himself. <clears throat> We've got to be nice and cool, nice and cool. Right? Stay on point, Donald. Stay on point. No sidetracks, Donald. Nice and easy. Nice. Because I've been watching Hillary the last few days. She's totally on a hinge. We don't want any of that. Joining me now to talk about this and more, Julian Zelizer, Princeton historian and professor. He's also the author of The Fierce Urgency of Now. Also with me, Ron Brownstein, who is senior to both of you. Mm. So, so, Ron, I'm going to stay on point myself. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and ask you why Mr. Trump said that. You know, I remember this. This reminds me of when George Bush, H.W. Bush in 92, read the cue cards, message, I care. He's kind of reading the stage instructions <laughs> to the audience. Look, the, the, the last few points in this election, the, the, the vote. Voters who have moved to make it a closer race than it was in mid-October are largely voters who are, have questions about both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Uh, our voters who may think that Hillary could question her honest and trustworthiness also question whether Trump has the temperament, judgment, and experience to succeed as president. The events of the last week, starting with the James Comey letter, maybe even a little before that with WikiLeaks, has put many of those voters looking more at their doubts about Clinton. The goal of the Clinton campaign in the last week clearly is to get them to focus again on their concerns about Trump and you see him there almost reminding himself if I can convince enough people that they can envision me as president maybe I can get there but but Julian arguably um, Trump went off message when he attacked the NBC mm. reporter Katie Tour yesterday at a rally and before you comment let's okay. listen to that so viewers know what I'm talking about we have massive crowds there's something happening they're not reporting it Katie you're not reporting it Katie but there's something happening Katie there's something happening, Katie. Okay, so that attack spawned this Twitter hashtag, I'm with, with her, right? Mm -hmm. So was that unwise, or did Mr. Trump stick to his particular script? I think it's actually on message. Uh, the central message, there's two. One is to attack Hillary Clinton and her character. The second is to attack the entire election process and to attack the media and say the whole system is rigged. And so I think when he's pointing out 
uh, a reporter and he's criticizing her and he's saying basically you're not covering what's actually going on it fits with the theme that he has closed this entire campaign with. Although I would say one thing, I mean, the defining divide in this race is the gap, is the education gap, uh, is the class inversion, the degree to which Hillary Clinton is running so much better among college-educated whites than blue-collar whites. The biggest gap we've ever seen, 20 points today in both the ABC Washington Post and New York Times CBS poll. She's 20 points better among college and non-college whites. And for those college whites, I think for many of them, the biggest hurdle for Donald Trump is his temperament, is exactly epic episodes like this. So while he does animate his, mobilize his base, I think he reinforces the problems that he has in the suburbs of Charlotte and Raleigh or Philadelphia where Melania Trump is going today. And that is heartbreak hell for him in this election. That's what he got to get over. That's what he has to get over in order to win those big white collar suburban counties where he's at risk well, of significantly in, in, in underperforming fairness, Romney. Though, both candidates have gone really negative, yeah. right? Yeah. Very negative. Um, Kellyanne Conway was asked about that on New Day this morning. She sees it differently, of course. She says her candidate and its negativity is more like a man saying what he means. Mm. Let's listen. I mean, I think people will look back at this campaign, particularly after he wins on Tuesday, Chris, and they'll say, we totally missed how much America just appreciated. And I hear it at these rallies. It makes me very emotional. How much America appreciated the fact that he and his family made enormous sacrifices to run for president. Americans have told pollsters for decades, we want somebody who's not of the political system. We want a true outsider, not just to disrupt the place, but to be the voice of the forgotten man and the forgotten woman. Well, there's a, there's a fine line between someone who speaks their mind and someone who's a bully. And I think the other electoral gap that he faces has been a gender gap. And this comment can also be problematic, even if it fits with his script, in terms of him singling out a female reporter uh, who's been harassed because of what he did to her, uh, what he said in previous campaigns. And I think he has a problem with suburban married women yeah. who are key to a victory for him. So I think that's another way in which this could hurt a bit. Uh, but it tightening, right. and, and yeah. saying, oh, it's not going to be a landslide for Hillary no, Clinton not, anymore. Look, she might lose. Yeah. In, so. in a race that is much closer and more competitive with more states at risk than Democrats expected, it's pretty clear that Hillary Clinton believes her Trump card, as it were, is the doubts about his temperament. That's the message she's gone back to. She wanted to end on a broader message about what she was going to bring to the country and what her real firewall is electorally are, are, are the doubts about whether he has the personal qualities that you want to see in a president. That's what they're advertising on. That's what she's doing the message on. And that, I think, is their core, their core asset or weapon in these white collar suburbs, which are her last line of defense and of course, in many Donald of these Trump's states. Core weapon is painting Hillary Clinton as, as a criminal because he also also, he brought up the word impeachment today. You know, yeah. if Hillary Clinton gets into office, you know, there might be impeachment hearings started right away yeah. and a criminal investigation. This hasn't been subtle, and this is why the Comey letter uh, played into a story that really started with the convention with the chance of lock her up. It is to literally criminalize his opponent, uh, setting up uh, an argument for his campaign, but even if he loses, I think that's the uh, issue that you're going to see front and center if you still have a Republican Congress. Uh, but but it, it, I think it's clear that the Clinton campaign is certainly not calm and confident, mm. and they're campaigning in Michigan. Uh, they are going uh, to many places, not giving off the aura that this is locked up anymore. Yeah. So do you guys care to make predictions? No, predictions. I'm a historian. <laughs> I don't have to do that. Yeah, I tell you that. <laughs> but, they, but, they, but but to Julian's point, one gamble they've made, just, just think about it. They have spent in this campaign $180 million in television advertising in Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio. Three states they don't have to win in order to win. They spent, by contrast, $16 million in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Colorado. And the time, the personal time of the candidates is comparable to that. They put a big bet on states that are, in effect, their insurance states. And the question that Donald Trump is trying to exploit is whether they have not paid enough attention to kind of their castle keep and whether they've left a door open for him to try to pry away one of these states where she has been leading in the polls pretty much all year. Five days from now, we'll see. At least yeah. I hope so. Ron Rothstein, Julian Zellweger, thanks so much.